live from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome to Boston, everybody. This is SiliconANGLE Media's special presentation of the IBM Chief Data Officer Summit at uh, Copley Marriott in Boston. Big week for theCUBE. I'm here with Stu Miniman. Stu, <laughs> good to be working with you yet again. This is three in a row for us. Um, we were at IBM Edge this week in Las Vegas. Uh, John Furrier and Peter Burris and team, Jeff Frick were out at uh, Oracle Open World. And then Bob Picciano is having a conference here. He's the leader of IBM's $15 billion analytics business. It's a two day CDO summit. And uh, IBM has been going after this base for quite some time. Stu, as you know, uh, the, from the MIT Chief Data Officer Conference. This is something that IBM has prioritized since the nascent days of the, the Chief Data Officer. Chief Data Officer has emerged in healthcare, financial services, and certain public sector environments because they're highly regulated, but it's begun to seep into other areas of, of business. A lot of discussion, discussion over the past several years about to whom should the CDO report? Should it be a reporting to the CIO? Most people feel it should not. What's the, what's the impact on the role of the CIO? I thought the CIO <clears throat> was the one who was responsible for data uh, versus just keeping the lights on. So some interesting discussions here. We heard uh, Stu and I were at the Diva Roundtable this morning and we heard some good stats, but Stu, I'll bring you into the conversation. You were at the CDO uh, event at MIT this year so far, how do they compare? Yeah, well, well, first of all, Dave, you know, great to be with you again here. Uh, it, it, we were at the you know infrastructure show. Uh, nominally, it was called Edge. Started heavily in storage, added you know power and mainframe, but we spent a lot of time talking about data. So it's only natural to go deeper into data. IBM, of course, doing a lot to move up the stack here. Uh, so, so get into that, and it, it, a lot of similar themes that, that I'm hearing so far uh, of uh, you know the CDO summit here compared to the MIT CDO event uh, that we've covered with the Cube with MIT for what what's it. Dave now four years, I think. Um, and, you know, similar, you know, a lot of government, uh, financial, uh, you, know, uh, you know, certain uh, environments that have a lot of governance issues uh, around data uh, and uh, everybody trying to understand, you know, how to really extract data out of it. I uh, love Bob Picciano this morning talking about how, um, you know, we can't just have, you know, some people off in the corner throwing reports at people. Uh, we're going to, you know, put, uh, I believe the term you used is, you know, data is going to be the middle manager, um, which, which means that, you know, we're going to give more people access to kind of the data itself and be able to dig in and manipulate it, uh, which is one of the promises of kind of this whole, you know, big data and analytics uh, era that we've been looking at for a number of years. The data is, is the new middle manager is what he said, and that's a really interesting comment because when we actually, Stu, in the 2006, 2007 timeframe, when we started Wikibon, the, the big electronic movement was the changes in the federal rules of civil procedure in 2006, kind of a boring but important topic. The reason why it was so important is because the rule said, the law said now that electronic evidence generally and specifically emails were uh, could be evidence then had to be saved and it was a big you know case where uh, Morgan Stanley for instance couldn't produce emails and they kept producing emails saying oh, oop judge we found some more oop judge we found some more and they got fined a hundred million dollars and that was a huge case that got everybody scared the general counsel started to freak out the point was is that at the time data was viewed as a liability it was all about okay how do we get rid of data defensively how long do we have to keep it? What risks do we have of keeping data around? We don't want to keep work, for a pharmaceutical, we don't want to keep work in process that says, uh, you know, this drug you know, could have these nasty side effects that could you know, lead to death, okay, and some smoking gun gets emerged. But now, the situation is totally flipped. It's very rare that you hear conversations about you know, data as a liability. Much more, Stu, you hear uh, things like, well, we want to keep data forever because it has value for us. And uh, so the, the, the bit has flipped quite substantially, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely right. We, we've been talking about, uh, you know, the, there's the line we've used over and over is data is the new oil. Um, you know, businesses are learning how to get new value out of their data. Um, and right, that bit flip of just saying, oh wait, I have to store it and it's a hassle and I need to you know, follow all these regulations to what can I do with it? How is it going to be uh, my differentiation going forward? Uh, and IBM's done some real interesting things. Uh, Bob, Bob talked a little bit about, you know, once again, why they bought the weather company, uh, which is all about data. 
heck, I was going back and forth with some people and saying, you know, Twitter might be selling itself. People talk about people like Google and Salesforce. Maybe IBM should buy Twitter because, you know, what better way to train Watson than to give them the access to what everybody in the world is thinking, uh, even though we'd worry that Watson might turn into a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're hoping to have uh, Pepper on at World of Watson, Stu, so maybe we can ask her about that. But um, <laughs> So a couple other interesting stats we heard today. So Stu and I attended the Data Diva uh, breakfast session. We were uh, a, a couple of the, 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 the males who were actually at the breakfast. There were several, actually, a handful. Uh, what we heard was actually a Gartner stat that 25% of chief data officers are women. Um, which I, I knew it was high, I didn't know it was that high, which is kind of interesting, and there was a discussion around, you know, why is that? As many of you know, we're going to be at the Grace Hopper event, and one of the areas that we're exploring is actually a fairly large number of women uh, uh, take computer science in college, but they don't end up in tech fields. It's interesting to see that they end up in this chief data officer role. One of the CDOs on the breakfast panel sort of intimated that, well, the, the role is not technical, and so as a result, a lot of men maybe don't want to go in that direction, but, but as well, it's a role that's, that's very difficult. You know, there was this, uh, uh, an article that, uh, that Caitlin, Caitlin Lepic put up this morning from Forbes, I think it was Forbes said, you know, is the C chief data officer a miracle worker? Well, you know, a lot of women are miracle workers. Maybe men don't want to work miracles, who knows? You know, it's something that a lot of, not much research has been had done on that. But it's an interesting discussion, just sort of hearing the perspective of the women who are chief data officers. What did you take away from that? Yeah, purpose? Dave, I mean, we touched on a broad number of issues, uh, things like just hiring, you know. Uh, I think many people have heard the research that say, you know, men, if they feel that they're 50% qualified, will go uh, and apply for something. Women need to feel that they're 75% qualified. So if you change the way you write your job description uh, and don't just say, hey, here's my ideal candidate, you say, hey, I'd like you to have one of these three things, you know, three of these five things, uh, it might open it up. Uh, there was one one person that said when they changed the description, it, he stopped getting all you know over forty year old male Caucasians and actually got a very diverse uh, you know uh, pool of applicants uh, and ended up hiring someone and felt that they, they really added really well to the team because uh, we understand we need a diversity of ideas uh, to be able to help us make better decisions. I mean, we talk about data, you know, the more data, the better, uh, the, the better viewpoint, the more different, you know, backgrounds, it helps us a lot. So hiring, uh, how do we keep, uh, you know, pay equity going forward? Uh, talked about issues, not only women that might leave the workforce for a while, but now even more men uh, might leave the workforce for, you know, a year or two uh, to, to, to take care of children. Uh, all those sorts of things, uh, and yeah, the, the chief data officer itself, uh, somebody said, yeah, maybe CDO is the chief diplomatic officer, and uh, there's plenty of women that understand the skill set that they need to be able to get in the middle uh, and manage the relationships of all these different groups that are uh, trying to you know, put their view on the data. So this is a, the, the discussion that we'll be having all day here at the, the, the Boston Copley Marriott. We've got executives coming on from IBM, we've got chief data officers, we've got analysts coming up. Uh, we're talking about data, data as an asset. Yeah, we'll vi revisit data as a liability. Now that you know, governance is starting to enter the, the conversation more, what are the data sources? What are some of the roadblocks in terms of actually executing on some of these larger analytics and data-oriented projects? So keep it right there, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're live from Boston. We'll be right back.